My name is uh, Frank van Harmelen and I work at the Vrije Universiteit, the Free University, here in Amsterdam. I lead the uh, Learning and Reasoning Research Group there. I think there are very rapid developments in AI, that's not a secret. Um, and everybody's talking about large language models, but I think there is a deeper uh, development in AI. Uh, the first generation of AI systems was all about uh, um, knowledge representation, about representing uh, large volumes of knowledge, encoding human knowledge in machine form. And the large knowledge graphs, which are so important at this conference, they are part of that generation. And the second generation of AI over the last 10 years, maybe 15, is all about uh, learning from data. So it is data-driven rather than knowledge-driven. And uh, I think that really the next generation of AI systems will be about the integration of these two. So the third generation will be a combination of the first and the second. And also I think for the developments at this conference, the combination of semantics, of knowledge graphs on the one hand, and of learning, machine learning from data, and also machine learning on these large knowledge graphs, that will be a very strong a new development and it means that these two ways of doing AI, the knowledge-driven AI and the data-driven AI, they can really compensate each other's weaknesses and so that together they will be, the third generation will be much better than either the first or the second generation separately. I will take the freedom to give uh, two advices. The first advice is uh, read the classics. And so students have a tendency nowadays to think that everything happened after 2020 and nothing that happened before is, uh, is of any importance. I think there is a lot of uh, lessons to be learned from the literature as far back as the 80s and the 90s. Uh, you don't need to read everything, but read the highlights of the old literature and take the lessons from that on board as well. That's my first advice. Maybe this sounds um, too much like an old guy talking, but uh, I think this is important. And my second advice would be, don't be too intimidated by the machine learners. So currently AI equals machine learning. Many journalists no longer even understand the difference between AI and machine learning. They don't understand that machine learning is just one way of doing uh, AI, uh, of the, uh, but that the field of knowledge representation, of semantics, knowledge graphs, all the topics from this conference are also a really important part. And you know, as I said you know, to the previous question, the future will be in the combination of those two. So the advice is don't be too intimidated by machine learning, stand your ground on semantics, because the future will be in the combination of the two. So the strength of, of RDF and RDF schema, and in a way also the strength of AL, is that they were deliberately made very simple. But certainly RDF is a, an RDF schema. No, we often joke that RDF schema is all the knowledge representation that everybody can, agrees upon, can agree upon before the war breaks out, right? So if you start to do more complicated things, then people start to disagree very violently. Uh, so it was good to make RDF schema so simple, uh, and it can do a lot of things. Now, there is Tim Hendler's famous phrase of a little semantics goes a long way. But the challenge for the future will be, will be to go beyond that very simple language, to make it more complicated because applications need some of those complications. Uh, I think the new development on RDF star is very important so that we can not only represent knowledge about the world, but that we can also represent knowledge about knowledge and that we can modularize this knowledge. So that's very important. But also things like representing uncertainty. Right? The world is not just true or false. The world is maybe and sometimes. Uh, so uh, uh, the representation of uncertainty is very important. The representation of fuzziness is important. Right? Was the conference fun? Uh, well, a bit or yes, a lot. Right, so that's not yes or no, but that's fuzzy concepts. 
I think all of those are very important also for a lot of applications. Um, and additionally, if we move RDF, RDF schema and all in the direction of representing uncertainty, representing fuzziness, it will make our conversation with the machine learners easier because they think in terms of properties that are gradual. Whereas we are used to, we are used to think in terms of properties that are binary, they're yes or no, but there's nothing in the middle. Machine learners are used to think in terms of, of things that move, that change by bit by bit instead of in a jump from one to zero. So if we address challenges like uncertainty or fuzziness, they are important for many applications, but they will also make our conversation with machine learners uh, much easier. For me, the thing that stands out most is the size of the conference. Right? So people vote with their feet, right? I mean, it's expensive for people to come to Amsterdam, to pay the fee. It's expensive for companies to send their expensive staff to the conference and be here. And I think 350 people on the floor here and another 50 people online, it's the last statistics I heard. No, all those people voted with their feet and are here at the conference. So that is the thing that was most remarkable for me that now, this is very much a, an alive and important uh, community with a very strong conversation between academia, where I live, and the commercial world, the companies where many of the participants live. So the size of the conference and the strength of that conversation, I think that is for me uh, really the highlight of the conference.